Oh, that sounds that sounds so familiar. Sounds like a famous uh, house song that I remember a long time ago in the 1990s. <laughs> With some lady just singing in high high pitched voices. How's it going? Well, today I'm a little frustrated with Logic. They're making a big mess of things with their additional content download. And it just really irking me really bad. I had a bunch of missing samples. You notice here in the Deep House loop pack from the additional content download, usually it just comes up as default like that. And then I could just go ahead and I'll, I'll pick this deep house. And then if I select it by tempo, what I noticed was happening is all the ones that were 124, which is really the real tempo of deep house, were all missing. They were all grayed out. And... To make it worse, the little download button, it was like a little white arrow, wouldn't work. You would click on it. For example, I actually have another one in here, Chill Wave. Right here. See this little arrow? I'd click on it, nothing happens. See, I'm clicking, nothing happens. Right click, nothing. I control click, whatever. Nothing happens. Just grayed out. It's like I can't get it, get to it. It's like, what the heck, Logic? What are you doing to me? So I did a little searching on the internet. And I found some interesting information. Apparently, this is only available if you have some version of GarageBand or something like that. So I decided, all right, well, let me open up GarageBand and see if I can download loops from there. Well... It was even worse. The only way it would let me download anything through GarageBand was I had to basically do a total reinstall of the whole library, which seemed because this would pop up in the loop browser in GarageBand, the same deal. And it showed, it showed that it was downloading. So I'm like, okay, but I don't want to download freaking almost 30 gigs of content because I have everything. I just need these files. So I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. So I did a little bit more investigating, and I found that if you go to the iTunes store, you got to check this out. This is kind of cool. All right, in here, and you just type in, you know, log in with your name. You go app store, whatever. You just go in here, and you do a search under iTunes store, and you just search... You know, GarageBand. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the GarageBand app. This one right here. I've already downloaded it. And I believe you can do the iPhone or the or the iPad one. I don't really think it matters which one you do. I did the iPhone one. I already have it on my iPhone anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And you, you can sign in with a legitimate account. Or an Ill illegitimate account, if you feel like you need to sign in that way. It does not matter. Because it's free. At least it was for me. Download it. And once it's downloaded, you just go to your my iPhone apps. Right here. And you just click right-click on it and do Show and Finder. Alright, so it's going to be in this mobile applications folder. Now cool thing is I just did this as I basically open with come on 
archive utility. It'll take a little bit to uncompress, or you could do it with the unarchiver or whatever you have. But once it uncompresses, takes about a good four minutes, whatever, you'll get this folder here. Now in this folder, you have this thing called payload. And it is a payload. Payday. Yep, payday. Now, don't worry about this. If you see this little thing here, that's, we're not really installing it. We're getting inside of it. Go show package contents. You know, right-click, show package contents. And then in here, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. Now, what you're really looking for in here is this a bundle. There's a specific, specific bundle that you need to have. And if I can remember what the name of it was, so I guess it might help if I actually sorted it by name or by type. Kind, I mean. Document. Library bundle. That's the one you want. See how it's really big? You could do it by size. It's the first one. If you sort it by size, it'll be the first one. Then you just do show package contents again. Right click. And it's this audio folder that you're looking for. And in that audio folder, you can just double click on that and it'll open up. This is where you need to go. Now in there, you're gonna find all your, your deep house loops. So if I went back to like all the, the ones I was missing in my deep house, well, let me pull over the right folder here. You see here, I know for sure I was missing like the rolled up tight beat. <laughs> so funny. It's so cliche uh, for deep house. <laughs> And if we do R O L L E D, there it is, right there. So what I, then? What I would do is I would just basically copy all that, Command C, and just do a Command T to open up a new tab. And then I have all my samples. They actually live in a folder on on an external hard drive, in a folder called Logic, GarageBand. Nope, sorry, Apple Loops, Apple, and Deep House right here. And then I would just do Command V, type in there. And I basically, I would just go search through here and find all the ones I was looking for. And they, there would be a bunch of them. You know, all the radiant chords are missing, all the ocean deep ones, pretty much all the 124 tempo were missing. So frustrating that I couldn't download these things. I don't know why it was, it was some kind of bug. Anyways, I fixed it. After you get all the ones copied into the, the folder location where it is, and now for some reason if you're not using an external folder it's gonna be in oh, open up another one here it's gonna be in your source drive so it could be like joe blow mac os x hard drive something something mine's raid 256 gb because i'm cool like that <laughs> so it's gonna be in your library and then you're gonna go to audio then it's going to be Apple Loops. Then you're going to see a folder called Apple. And then Apple is you're going to see all your, your loop library is going to live in there. Now, look at this. Check this out. Let me zoom in. See that? It's a little arrow icon. That means it's a sim link. Now, sim links are kind of cool because you can get around Logic's big disorganized ADD mess of their content organization, which is really bad. Just the fact that they don't give you the option to save when you install Logic, to save additional content to uh, an external drive or somewhere else than some hidden location that's so hard to find and it just drives you nuts. It just It's just crazy. I, I just don't understand. And that's the one thing I hate logic for. I really do. I just, you know, everything else I like. But this just irks me. Anyways, 
how you get around it is you could use one or two things. You can use this little program called Simlinker. Really cool app. You just basically browse to the source of where you want this to live. So like right now, this Apple folder actually lives on my mm, samples drive. And in there, I have a folder called Logic. And in there, I have this thing called Apple Loops. I believe that's it. There's my Apple folder. That's the one. So then, open that up, and that's where that's what I want to create. So then, what I will do is then I will just basically type in, you know, backslash library. If I can spell it right audio apple space loops like that and it says invalid target pay you know and then apple something like that now you probably already have a folder in there that's there so what you want to do is you want to basically either rename that existing folder or move everything that's inside that folder to your external hard drive and then delete this folder. And then once you do that, then you can hit create and it'll do that. And boom, you know, you have a nice little sim link that goes to an external drive. And you could do this for all the big, the big ones. For example, you got in application support, you have GarageBand. I did that for that. So this whole folder lives on our external hard drive because Logic likes to put stuff in here too. And A like to put stuff in this instrument library. And if we go over here to sampler, sample files, all these, check, check how big this guy is. If we go info, 15, almost 16 gigabytes. I don't want that living on my source drive. You kidding me? No way. So that's why I put it on my external hard drive. Make a sim link. Yes. Now, and then there's another one in here called Logic. And then in here, I have my Alchemy samples. Alchemy. Yeah. And if we go info, I was not going to do an alias. But if we do, if we show you where. It really is, which is over in samples, logic, core. That's where it is. Another 15 gigabyte drive. Look at this one. Almost 30 gigs. Look at this one. You know, my two. Eh, not, not too big. But... The, the reason why I do not like this stuff living on my source drive, there's two reasons. The first one is it will slow down your logic session. Because what happens is when logic is working from this interface here and then starts opening samples on the same source drive, you're going to run into caching issues and disk accessing issues. So what I mean by that is logic has to pull in resources to actually create, you know, keep the interface going and flowing. And then when it has to pull in this, those more resources for your loops and all that off of the same source drive, you're going to run into bandwidth issues. I'm talking disk bandwidth issues you know so if you're running a 72 uh, a normal 7200 rpm hard drive which is you should not be doing and god forbid if you're running a 5400 rpm hard drive then yeah you know you shouldn't even be running logic but you're going to run into some big issues and you're going to get all kinds of errors and and stoppage and all that and yes, the, the main the main thing that is really more important than all disk disk issues is your CPU speed. But that's more important. But I just want to just bring this home here and say that hard drive 
when you're storing samples, all the pros do this. They do not store it on their same hard drive. They have a second external hard drive where they store it. And this external hard drive is another fast hard drive, like another SSD. And if it's not an SSD, it's a really super fast 10,000K hard drive or some kind of hard drive that is RAID 0. RAID 0 basically doubles, well, sort of kind of doubles the speed. All that said, store your samples in a separate external hard drive. Now, why Logic doesn't give us the ability to do this and we have to do some hackery trickery? I don't know. It just, it's almost like they want us to be caught up in this realm of just fixing logic all the time. I don't know. But, you know, once you get around these, these issues, logic's very smooth and it's very nice. So, and it's not hard. It really isn't. Creating a simulac is not hard. And I'll even show something even cooler. That is LN-S. Oh, uh, what I did there... That is the Linux command or Unix command for creating a the same thing I did over here with Simlinker. Same thing, but it's on the command prompt, and I'm using iTerm. iTerm is a beautiful command shell type of bash shell type of program utility. I just love it. Very custom. I like the colors. I you know syntax highlighting. Blah blah blah, and you could type this in there and basically what this will do is this will basically create it will take my source drive of alchemy samples and put it in my downloads as a folder named alchemy and it'll actually sim link it and i already did this and you just hit enter and then if we go to my downloads folder you know this for example say there it is Look on it, and there's all my alchemy samples. So that was just for example. So that is another way that you could do symlinks. Symlinks are very easy, not hard to do. And when lot when you update samples and you add new samples, or when logic downloads samples and puts them in, does not know the difference between a symlink and a real file, a uh, regular folder. The next question, I was talking about how you know I. I took apart that folder and then I just copied it in there into my source drive and it could be wherever you want it to be. Reindex all loops, it takes forever to reindex. Then once you reindex, re you can basically go back into whatever genre that you're working in and those files should show up. You may have to restart logic. I just can't remember that point. So there. That's how you get those missing files. Now, the question is, a lot of times, you know, you, you run into issues, say like, all right, I downloaded all this stuff and, and now I got to re-download it all over again. And I don't want to wait for Logic's slow ass servers. You know, because anytime you download something from Logic, especially additional content, it's slow. It's like DSL speed. Or like modem speed. I mean, it's like, my gosh. I mean, it's like, I'm like, hello, Logic, like update your servers, you know, and, and make them faster. But, you know, they won't. So there is a way around it. And what you do is say, like, you you are downloading, um, for example, I have GarageBand. And I, I first thought, well, I'm going to have to re- you know, reinstall all of the GarageBand loops because, you know, the ones that are missing here are, for some reason, they're not really related to Logic, but more related to GarageBand. But somehow Logic picks them up as a Deep House pack. I don't know why. It's really confusing. But I kind of figured out that I could get them if I open up GarageBand and go into its loop library and download them and somehow the restore library. Now, here's the thing. I didn't really want to do that. I mean, that's like almost 30 gigs. So I'm like, okay, what do I do here? You know, all right, I already downloaded it anyway. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna show you guys this little trick here. 
about this additional content. So that way, if you do have to download all this stuff, you could keep it and not have to download it again. So what I'm talking about here is this. You go in here, because the thing is, is when it's downloading, it'll pop, come up with a prompt, it'll, it'll show downloading, but the thing is, is it downloads to a temporary file. You're like, well, where is it download to? Because it's not downloading into my core files or any of those sound libraries. I don't see it going anywhere. But it's like 30 gigs is going somewhere. But where? Well, yeah. Hey, tell me about it. Another confusing thing that Logic's doing. So what you do is you go into your source drive, your main source drive, which is mine is the RAID 256 gigabyte because I'm cool like that. And then you what you want to do is you want to go into your private folder now what hold on here you're gonna say well I don't have a private folder I don't see it well you got to show all hidden files uh, what do I mean by that well you got to open up a thing of Google here and you got to type into Google and you go show hidden files Mac and then you just basically you could click on the first link it doesn't matter just find one that you're comfortable reading with this one's good. And then all you do is you just copy this right here. Command C. You open up a command prompt or a terminal session, whatever. You just go into your utilities folder. Let's see here. You go applications, utilities. See there. And then you open up your terminal. And then you just type that in there like so. You might have to put a sudo in front of it, but I don't think so. It should just work fine. You say that, hit enter. It won't say anything. It won't let you know. But it'll do something. Trust me. And then, you, then you'll go back to your, your thing. And you'll say, well, I still don't see it. <laughs> what happened, man? Well, dude, you gotta, you got to think beyond yourself here, okay? See... Yeah, it did it, but the thing is, is you're still running something, and you haven't refreshed your your finder yet. So what you got to do is you got to do what this guy says, and you just basically you find the little finder icon, right? You you hold your your old Option Alt key, and then right click on it or Control click and hit relaunch. And what that'll do is relaunch your your finder session, and then you go back in to your main folder and then you'll see private right there and then in private you what you want to do is you want to look for var folders and in folders it might be on one of these things but it's usually it's the PS you're gonna look for a long string like this it could be any number it's a temporary file and it, mine was in the C how you know for sure that it's not in another folder is well if you go in here you see that you got this little minus icon it means it's already been used so you you don't even bother see like there it's already been used see already been used so but if i look in here i have my c nothing's been used so i know something's going on here and i can see there's already a bunch of stuff in here now what i'm really looking for in here so i go and switch switch to this view I'm looking for something that's called com apple something something garageband because that's the one I was using. Yeah, it could be logic or whatever you're using that you're looking for. You want com apple dot whatever and it'll have a 10 in front of on the back of it. You know, and also you could do you could sort search it by date because it usually it might be the most one of the most recent ones too. So you look how it's sort of at the top here. I know it's that one. So I open this up and then you're going to look for this music apps. And then you, you know, and then you're going to find this folder right here, additional content download. And then you, and then you're going to find this one, LP 10, blah, 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 2016 content. And then in here, what you want is you want all these ones that are the package files see how you got all these right here you want to keep all these you basically 
highlight them all, Command C, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to open up a new one, a different one here, create a, a new folder, and before I do it, I want to make sure I have enough space. If I click on the master folder and get info, 22 gigs. That's what I downloaded. So if I go in here and I make, I know I have 22 gigs, so I could just go into my logic folder, uh, create a new folder in here called content archive, something like that. When I paste all 390 of them, look at that. I have them saved. And then I could throw them up on a, a Google Drive or some kind of cloud drive up there and have them saved. So that way I don't have to wait for good, uh, Apple's or Logic's slow ass servers uh, to re download them again. I, I could go through like a very fast, speedy Dropbox or you just keep them on a, a nice little external hard drive, uh, USB one. And, you know, you don't have to install them one by one, you know, because that'd be stupid. You could actually highlight you know, 20 at a time or whatever that you can handle with your computer processing. Say so like, like this. So, and then you just go open and it'll automatically start installing them, you know, at the same time. So as that's installing, I just wanted to show that and just kind of run that by you over some of logic's kind of annoying things with their additional content. But once you get behind that, it's really easy to get, you know, get around things. Now, as I was doing that, I was able to get all the ones from my deep house because I re-indexed the loops, but you know, all my stuff lives is I, I have it lived in the Apple loops folder. You know, I got this chill wave and it's missing stuff too. So then, you know, I got to go in and I got to go in here and I got to search for electro. There it is. Electro topper beat electric pop beat, you know, all those. So basically I just, I just do. Command C, and then I'll go into my chill wave over here. Actually, probably just uses this drop and drag into my chill wave. Boom, it's, it's done, just like that. I just got to remember to re-index all the loops when I'm done. So I know that one was missing some. I think the hip hop was missing some. Hip hop's missing a lot. Look at that. It's just a bunch. It seemed like they're at a certain tempo too. The hip hop's missing some, so I gotta go through and do that one. Lost in Ibiza. <laughs> Luckily. Uh so cliche. Uh you know, say like Electra House and you know, we could just double check, make sure that you know it has it. So if I do lost, type in lost, my search. See it's there it is, lost in Ibiza, pluck whatever it was I was looking for. Love prevails. Yeah, sure. Whatever. That's so corny. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're all there. You know, they're all inside this little iPhone app. Now, why the heck I can't download them? I have no idea. But the fact that I was able to get it through an iPhone app that I hacked up, hey, that's even better. And, and the other thing that's really funny about all this, I probably will never even use these samples, but the fact that I was able to figure out a way to get them and hack them, get them in here. I think that's awesome. And I had a blast figuring out that challenge. Yes, I know. I'm worried like that. Was the dubstep one missing some? I don't know. I don't think so. Nope. That wasn't missing any. R&B. Was that missing any? Nope. That's not missing any. Tech House. Oh, that was missing some. Yeah, one. And yeah, the deep house is missing a bunch, but I already fixed that one. For me, that's what all was missing. The chill wave was missing in indie disco. I don't think that was missing anything. Nope. Indie disco. Yeah, some of these samples in here are kind of tight. You know, they're pretty good. You know, especially in the deep house ones. I was listening to some of those. Those are. They had some pretty cool beats in here that was kind of interesting. That sounds pretty good. It's a halfway decent. That sounds pretty good. I like that. Oh. 
Wow, that sounds that sounds so familiar. Sounds like a famous uh, house song that I remember a long time ago in the 1990s, <laughs> with some lady just singing in high high pitched voices. Huh, does that remember something? Wow. Anyways, remember, my friends, big reveal, big reveal. Yes.